This is the Small Business Report, powered by PNC Bank, your weekly access to all the tools you need to succeed. Stay tuned next for expert advice from business owners, subject matter experts, and government agencies. Each week right here, you'll learn tips on how to start, grow, and finance your business. The Small Business Report is supported by the D.C. Small Business Development Center, a partnership program nationally accredited by the Association of America's SBDCs and funded in part by the U.S. Small Business Administration, Howard University, with Howard University serving as the network's headquarters. Stay tuned. Coming up next, your host, Carl Brown, State Executive Director of the District of Columbia Small Business Development Center. This is the Small Business Report. Hi, this is Jermaine Johnson, Regional President for PNC Bank. At PNC, we believe that we play an important role in building strong, vibrant, more self-reliant communities. Our responsibility to help drive meaningful change has never felt more important than in this moment. Visit pnc.com slash diversity to learn more. The PNC Financial Services Group, Inc., all rights reserved. Hello, this is Carl Brown, host of the Small Business Report on Sirius XM Channel 141, HUR Voices. Every Thursday at noon, we bring you the stories of small business owners and subject matter experts that can help you start, grow, or sustain your business. Please be sure to tune in every Thursday at noon on Sirius XM Channel 141, HUR Voices, to hear the Small Business Report. Winter could put a freeze on your finances with expensive car repairs. Do you want to deal with getting stuck somewhere because your car broke down? I don't, but I did. Standing in the snow was no fun waiting for a tow. That's why I have Car Shield. Taking care of a covered repair with Car Shield's administrators is easy. They handle all the paperwork and payments. Seriously, Car Shield could help save you thousands. And you get to choose the mechanic to do the work. Car Shield does the rest. Plans through Car Shield even provide coast to coast roadside assistance and rental coverage all at no additional charge. That's why they're America's number one auto protection company. Car Shield is the best defense against costly repairs that could put a deep freeze on your plans and finances. Visit carshield.com slash report to save 10%. That's carshield.com slash report. A deductible may apply. Welcome to the Small Business Report here on Sirius XM Channel 141. And as I promised, folks, we're going to have a wonderful show today. We're going to have my man DJ Tom Corley, also known as DJ Desire. We're going to find out how the DJs of America were affected by the COVID and what it takes to be a successful DJ. So that's number one. Number two, folks, on the bottom half of the half hour, we're going to have Wendy Turner Miller. Wendy Turner Miller. She is the owner of Superior Innovative Solutions out of Detroit. And she is the lawyer that is now in waste management. Okay. We're going to find out what made her pivot from law to waste management. And I forgot to tell you, though, I forgot to tell you. So DJ Desire and I go way back to Jamaica, Queens. Another one, folks, another one. Yeah, we from Jamaica, Queens, and uh, he's making a big splash in the DJ business. And I want to highlight what he's doing. But I also want to talk about engagement. As a small business owner, you must be engaged in all facets of your business, from hiring to firing, supply schedule, supply chain management, promoting your business, training your employees, finance, how to bank, all that good stuff. You got to be involved in every facet of your business. If you are not, you will not be successful. You cannot leave it up to anyone but yourself. Okay? You must be fully engaged. We'll be right back after these messages. or 
engage your target market to enhance your desired results, this is where entertainment meets education. The Holloway Media Group will help you create, distribute, and edit your multimedia productions. Let our experts provide talent development advice and assistance using media to improve productivity of your workforce. We'll develop a customized program to meet your unique needs. We have your media solutions. Visit HollowayMedia.com for more information. Hey, Small Business Report listeners. Are you a small or mid-sized business? Let BDPAToday.com help you leverage emerging technologies and digital innovations to transform your business. BDPAToday.com will highlight your organization's innovations, solutions, and success stories. Let BDPAToday.com publish your branded videos, blogs, and photos to a national tech industry audience and assist with your awareness building campaign. With BDPAToday.com, you can network with qualified and certified tech professionals and get access to development developers, gamers, hackers, and interns to join your team for short or long-term projects. Visit bdpatoday.com for true digital transformation that will drive competitive advantage to your organization. That's bdpatoday.com. Tune in to The Skin Deep Show with host Sharon Morton as she engages your senses and examines the issues affecting black skin and its treatment in every facet of life. From beauty, health, and wellness to social injustice and mass incarceration, it's a show designed to stimulate your mind, body, and soul. Don't miss it. The Skin Deep Show, every Friday at 5.30 p.m. and Sunday at 4.30 p.m. on Sirius XM Channel 141 HUR Voices. Welcome back to the Small Business Report here on Sirius XM Channel 141. This is your host, Carl Brown. And like I said earlier, I got my boy, my man from Jamaica, Queens, DJ Desire, also known as Tom Crawley. Yes, he's a party DJ. He handles anniversaries, weddings, but mitzvahs, reunions, the whole nine, clubs too. He'll do anything, He'll any party, he'll make magical for you. And that's what we want to talk about. What is it like to be a DJ? So without further ado, I'm going to bring my man Tom in. Tom, brother, thank you for being on the Small Business Report. How you doing? What up? What up? From Don't forget, <laughs> man, from Queens come Kings, brother. That's right. There you go. From <laughs> Queens come Kings. Yes, sir. I love it. I love it. Hey, that's the first time I heard that one. So I'm, I'm this old to find that one out. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can run with that. Run with that. We, hey, we can run with that for sure. For sure. So why why did you want to be a DJ? Well, in my earlier years, uh, I grew up in a household that was very lively. Um, my family gathered for just various events and for no reason at all, just to get together. Uh, my uncle James Spaulding is a world-renowned jazz saxophonist. He's played with everybody. Freddie Hubbard, um, Sonny Rollins, it runs the gamut, man. So I always saw the impact that music had on people, how we can bring people together and evoke certain emotions. And I don't care how much negativity is going on. You play the right song, change the mood. So I, I wanted to be a part of that, not to mention the fact that I noticed at a, at a particular gig or an event all the ladies want to know, well, who's the DJ? <laughs> hey, the DJ, being a DJ is definitely a, a woman magnet, for sure. Especially if you're good. So how, how long have you been doing this DJing? I started, uh, I could have my first gig where people actually paid me to play music in 1975. Oh, there, there you go, there you go. I you know, think, I think I... I think it was 76 for me. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, we around the same time. Yes, we around sir, we the same know. time, you know? So. Yeah, we, we, we the same vintage right there, Carl. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, when you first start something out, just like if you start out in business, you don't know what you don't know. That's right. And then you get some, you get some, some information, you get a knowledge base, then you know what you don't know. And right. hopefully you progress from there then when you actively think about it, you're proficient. There you and go. And then you want to get to a point where, without even thinking about it, you're knocking it out of the park. So my first paid gig was in 75. And, uh, you know, 
from there, you know, based on, you know, the parties in the parks. And I, I, I had a real yin, a yearning to learn what the foundation of this, how do you become really good? Because I would go in here and Fendi Machine, King Charles, New Sounds. And I wonder, what does it take to make you make yourself that good? You right. know, you go to, go to hear uh, T. Scott at the Better oh, Day. Oh, yeah. Live in a band at the Paradise Garage. Yes. You know, Louis, Louis Vega, go to the Latin. Yes. Mm. What What did it take? Sugar Daddy at the at the Silver Shadow. Mm. You know, when you take you take a, a, a look at there are certain commonalities in people that have achieved that level of success. So, you know, it started out. I just wanted to be the guy that the girls wanted to be around. Then I wanted to know how do you become really good, and I and I paid my dues, studied my lessons, and I got better. Oh, that's what it always takes. I mean, you know, they, this whole show is is based around taking small businesses to the next level. Mm -hmm. And, you know, DJing is a small business. A lot of people say, oh, well, DJ, hey, well, that's just playing records. No, it's a business, baby, because you are booking events. You are taking your music. I mean, we remember we used to take crates of yeah. records to events. Correct. I mean, you know, so you had to be prepared. I mean, you couldn't take every one of your records. So you had to be prepared. You had to take, a, uh, you know, what you thought would move the crowd. I mean, that's what it was yeah. all about. So, yes. Yes. So that, you know, that's, that's, DJing is not, it's not complicated, but it is difficult. You know, the basic rudiments of DJing, you play some music, people enjoy it, they dance. Now, right. how you execute that, that's where the skill comes in. Right. I mean, my boy used to count beats and all that. I mean, he yeah. would record them. I mean, he'd have books, books and books and books of saying, OK, this is what goes with this. This is a good, you know, you can mix right here, you know, that kind of thing. And so, it, it, you know, you yeah, you just can't, you know, have a crate of records and think you're going to be a DJ. That's, that's not what it's all about. Good DJs play records that people want to hear. Great DJs play records that people didn't know they wanted to hear. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, I like that's, that. that's the next level. That's the next level. Because you can take a list of songs, the top 100 songs for the last 10 years, and have some modicum of success. Yeah. But to take it to where people are tapping their feet on the way out, where you have to turn the lights and send them home, that takes a real spiritual connection. That's the next level. Oh, yeah. I, I love what you're saying about that spiritual connection, because I'm going to tell you something. I went to uh, a Marcus Miller concert at the uh, Blues Alley my in man. D.C., right? My, man. my people, yeah. right? Right. Another Jamaica, Queens, Rochdale Village product, right? So up. him, Bernard Wright, Philippe Sace, a couple other cats up there, and they were jamming so hard. They had their eyes closed, and when they opened their eyes, they it, it was like they were looking up to the sky. And right. I said, they are on another plane. They have left the building. Right? They have left the building. They are <laughs> spiritual now, right. you know, and that's the same thing with, with being a DJ. I yeah. mean, you can get the crowd to go to a whole nother level. That's correct. That's correct. You know, and that's interesting, like, when you, when you play – in a club environment, you may be on the bill with several other DJs. Yeah. And there could be a rush to play the hot song. And I learned from some like Tommy Allen, God rest his soul, DJ Lance, oh, yeah. God yeah. rest his soul, that sometimes how you play them is more important than what you're playing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like you talked about, like I mentioned the spiritual connection. If you go to a business and that business owner is spiritually connected. It shows in the staff. It shows in the feeling. That absolutely is the same thing with the DJ. When the DJ is focused, they put in the work, they're spiritually connected. I mean, there's nothing better. You can feel it. The energy is palpable when you walk into the venue. Yeah, when you walk in, just like you just identified it. I walked into um PJ's Coffee Shop, they sell like New Orleans cuisine and coffee. Mm -hmm. And um, and the owner was in there and it was a whole different energy mm -hmm. than when workers in there by themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like magical. 
you know, and then people feed off of that. And, and that's what a DJ does. So, so what, what skills do a DJ need to be successful? Well, first of all, you have to have a love of people. You have to have a good ear for that it. Because you can put a bunch of great musicians on a track and it may not be a hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that's, that's certain something. Um, you have to... You have to have um, the ability to be selfless, to not have it be about you first and foremost, but you have to be a narcissist to get up in front of a bunch of people like a singer, a bass player or a DJ. You have to believe I'm that dude. Oh, or, yeah. <laughs> or you won't be successful. That's but, right. the, you know, but you also have to have that element to where I got this. I want to bring you all along. Now, I got this, I want to leave you all behind. So you certainly have to have that active listening. You have to have a good sense of what a groove is, you know. And it's hard, like James Brown would try to describe the groove. It is what it is. (laughs) Do you know what it is or you don't? And those that get it will get it. And when you have that, that sense and you've captured that element, it shows, man, the people don't have a choice but to have a good party. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can... It, when you get that, when you hit that groove, there's there's a um, TikTok video of this little kid in the middle of a party getting his groove on. Yes, when he's doing the hand roll. Yeah, yes. yeah, you seen it? Yeah, that. yeah. that's yes. all I'm telling you, man. Yes, that that is what you shoot for. <laughs> yes. Yes. He is he feeling is, it. He is he's definitely not focused feeling. on what anybody else got going on. He wants y'all to ride with him. And you feel That's like right. I, I, I want to be where you're at on that. Right. That is absolutely yes. where it's at. I love That's that. That's where it's at. Yeah. You know, I, I've spent a lot of time going to clubs over the years and, you know, like 54 and Xenons mm-hmm. and and then the Kali Braun and, and uh, Silver Shadow, Bentley. I could get 54, man. That's big dog stuff. I had to drive by Studio 54. I, they wouldn't let me in, man. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I'll tell you my secret, man. I'll tell you my secret. I used to work out at Mid-City Gym. Okay. And that's where all the bodybuilders, Arnold, uh, uh, Franco, uh, Frank Zane, all of them used to work okay. out at, right? And all of the bouncers at the clubs worked out there, too. So when you were a 17-year-old kid bench pressing 400 pounds, they thought I was already in college. Gotcha. So they were like, hey, what you doing this weekend? Huh? Nothing. They didn't right. know that I was using my bus pass to get to 54. <laughs> right. I was using right. my bus pass to get to Bentley's Silver Shadow. You know, right. they didn't right. know right. none of that, you know. Right. But, uh right. You know, that's that's the way it is. That's the way it was. But let's talk about that when we come back. Why don't you give them your contact info so if they're looking for a DJ in the New York area that they, they can reach out to you. I keep it fast and clean. Just hit me up at dj.desire at yahoo.com. I'm available. Holler at your boy. There you go. But look, we'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to the Small Business Report with Carl Brown. And my guest today, Tom Corley, street DJ, DJ Desire. We'll be right back after these messages. It's Madison, the Black Eagle. This is Karen Hunter. This is Clay King. Al Sharpton. Hey, it's Lauren Coates. Hey, this is Godfrey. Serious XM. Urban View. One, two, six. Urban View is where Americans get to see what America is supposed to look like. We are free to express our opinions as long as they're honest. From sunup till sundown. All are welcome, but be careful if you come in, because your life might be changed. I'm super excited to be able to engage folks. And that's what's happening right now. Urban View. Keep it real. Channel 126. Hello, this is Carl Brown, host of the Small Business Report on Sirius XM Channel 141, HUR Voices. Every Thursday at noon, we bring you the stories of small business owners and subject matter experts that can help you start, grow, or sustain your business. Please be sure to tune in every Thursday at noon on Sirius XM Channel 141, HUR Voices, to hear the Small Business Report. It's the end of a long school day, attending classes, library time, and meeting deadlines for term papers. 
But between work, school, and balancing a social life, it can be hard to find time to cook quality and nourishing meals at home. Meet Din Din. The Din Din mobile app and website make it easy to browse and order a variety of delicious heat and serve meals created by local chefs. Your curated premium meals are then delivered weekly right to your door. It's time for Din Din. Download the Din Din mobile app today or visit eatdindin.com. Hi, this is Jermaine Johnson, Regional President for PNC Bank. At PNC, we believe that we play an important role in building strong, vibrant, more self-reliant communities. Our responsibility to help drive meaningful change has never felt more important than in this moment. Visit pnc.com slash diversity to learn more. The PNC Financial Services Group, Inc., all rights reserved. Welcome back to the Small Business Report here on Sirius XM Channel 141. This is your host, Carl Brown. Like I said, I got my man, Tom Corley, in the studio with me. And we, you know, DJ Desire out of New York, Jamaica, Queens, folks. Um, look, we're talking about DJing. And a lot of people don't think DJing is a job or a business, but I'm here to dispel the myth that it is. It is a job and it is a small business. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that Tom and I share, but I want to talk about how do you stay current with the new technology, the latest technology and the latest music? Because there's so much music out here. Well, you know, I found that it's important to continue to be teachable. So I, I popped my head into Guitar Center you know, music trends, the places where the technology comes out, go to the audio shows. So I transitioned from vinyl to CD players. Okay. And now I use a controller. And the controller mm -hmm. basically looks, it takes time-coded information and takes that track off your laptop. And you basically, in effect, have a compact unit that's a mixer and two turntables. You know, it, it makes it simple to take out uh, your sound system. Now, of course, okay. that that's that's the rudiments of it. Now, how you execute that? Because you can you can give somebody a hammer that doesn't make them a carpenter. That's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Preach. You know, so <laughs> there is there is some work by because people say, "Well, DJing is easy." I have people come up to me at a party. You have every song on that laptop. I don't. I don't. Can I plug my phone into your laptop? No. Yeah. So, you know, it does take effort to, to, to stay current enough that you can utilize the technology because what, it has to be a second nature. So I spend the time to get in that basement. You know, the first time that Serato is a program that a lot of DJs use. So okay. I utilize Serato. All my music is in my iTunes folder and I use Serato. And that's basically just a gigantic virtual record crate. Okay. So, you know, I have my files. Like I said, I have 100,000 songs. And that allows me to access this music because these days people are getting the music differently. We used to listen to BLS, Frankie yeah. Crocker. Oh, yeah. Um, Ken Spiderweb, Vaughn Harper. Now, via YouTube, via streaming services, people are staying ahead of these trends. So you have to keep your ear to the streets. As a DJ, it's important to pop your head into a club here and there. You need to see what's popping. It's even more so now that, you know, back in the day, you should be able to listen to WBLS, take their playlist. You go out for a certain demographic and play for them. Those are going to be the hits. Yes. You bit, your work has to be different now. Yeah. You know, I look at charts. I look at the most Shazam songs. I look at what Spotify has up. I look at Billboard. You know, you get your, you get your, your metrics down and then the art comes in. You know what I mean? Because the mm. art, the art is different than the science. Oh you know? yeah, oh yeah. I so, mean, the art is you know how you blend, how you yeah. scratch, yes. any sound effects. I mean, we used to do a lot of sound effects. And, All and that you stuff. Have to be, you have to uh -huh. be mindful. It's like if you're making a sandwich, a sandwich of four ingredients may be much better than a sandwich with eight ingredients. Oh yeah. And I've seen DJs that were very skilled with scratching and cutting leave the crowd. Like, remember in Back to the Future when he first started playing that guitar? Oh, yeah. yeah. But then he left the building and left the crowd behind. It's okay <laughs> if you leave the building, but take the people with you. 
<laughs> Don't leave them behind. So, you know, you, you utilizing the technology, there's a lot of uh, access to different things you can do. But being a student of it allows you to execute because it has to be second nature. You can't be thinking about how um, how do I access this? Which button do I hit? So there is some work that has to be done, man. Oh, no, you, can, you, you got to practice, man. I mean, yes. I, I used to sell my practice tapes mm. all the time because, you know, mm-hmm. people will all give them away because I, I love to give the, you know, they used to have this saying, give the gift of music. Yes. And I used to believe that. And, and my friends today say, oh, man, I still got them tapes you gave me or I got those CDs you gave me because... Yes. I put a lot of time and energy into that. Yeah, yeah I just, just didn't put a bunch of records together. Right. I, there was there was a theme that was going through that whole thing. A piece of yourself went into it, right? That makes a difference. Exactly. Yeah, you, you just can't, can't make it happen. Yeah. Well, you know, you can tell when something's genuine. Like I'm not really a gigantic opera fan or ballet, but I know a good one when I see it. Oh yeah, yeah. You know. So, I mean, you you went to the Scratch DJ Academy. Tell yes. us what that was about. Well, my, my goal when I went to the Scratch Academy that was started by Jam Master J, you know, people didn't know that. And right. his, I, I met his son there, TJ Mazell is one of the DJs there. Um, my goal was to get uh, access and to be a part of the high-level retailers because the Scratch Academy has... Uh, ongoing contracts with like say Tom Ford. Okay. And um, I met some good people there. I met some people that, you know, and it was such a diverse uh, offering of DJ styles. I mean, Graham was a Theodore who is credited with being the inventor of scratch. Okay. He was one of the instructors there. Um, um, DJ Mel Starr was down there. He, he did a, a a cameo or two. So my goal was to expose myself to different techniques and also get access and to have an opportunity to broaden my, my business base. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you something because you, you know, Jamaica Avenue, just like yes, I do. Sir. Yes, sir. I, I, I had a, a bunch of uh, um, young entrepreneurs in my office and I was telling them about the magic on Jamaica Avenue back in the day where you can go in and out of all the stores on a Saturday and, you know, cause that's when we used to shop mostly. And you go on the store and you hear that beat, boom, 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 boom. And then I, I showed him, I says like, the reason why you hear that beat is because everybody's pulling their money out their wallet, throwing it down <laughs> on the counter, right? Everybody was spending yeah. money down there, man. Yeah, and so, yeah, a lot of commerce. A lot of commerce down there, that's true. A lot of commerce, and that, that beat had you going because, you know, you were looking at clothes, you wanted to look fly and all that, and then they had that beat going, so you was like, oh, yeah, tonight I'm going out, and you got your money out the bottom, those those nice clothes. So they couldn't well, believe it, I said. You can uh-huh. go to the Wiz and then two doors down, go to Lloyd's, get your gear correct. Yes. Go across the street to Central's, get yep. your shoe right. Woo! Go to Spence and get yourself, get yourself a Kango. Yeah. You know, right there in one little area. That was that was a community back in the day. It's it, I don't know the last time you've been down there. It's not the same. No, it's not the same. In, we had a moment in time. Yeah. You know, the same thing yeah. with the music. You know, you could go from one park to another. Um, you had street celebrities. They ended up being club celebrities. Some of these folks ended up on television, but yes. you had access. They, you had mm-hmm. access. I mean, I played football with Marcus Miller, and I tell you, they made me laugh when they told me Marcus is on Saturday Night Live. I said, "Well, he's a good dude, but he wasn't that funny." Then I could, then I looked. He's yeah, in the band. right. And it, yeah, he was a musician, yeah, and I, he I was the he musician. Was like, yeah, he was. He was the man. Class, world class. Yes. You know, he, he um, well, that's why I got my theme music. I got it from him. But, I mean, world-class brother. I mean, my, I took my mom to one of his concerts. Man, she, he, he, like, stopped the show. He was like, oh, I got to give Miss Brown a hug, man. Because oh, she was there beautiful. 72 with him. So, that's and PS80, you know, while, while we were there. So, yeah, 
So, I mean, that, that brother, man, he's, he, he's not just the baddest bass player on the planet. He is uh, a real humanitarian. He's yeah. a, a, a yeah. real good brother, real good brother, yes. you yes. know. So, I mean, you know, but that's that's what we grew up around. I mean, so what what is the most rewarding part of being a DJ? Because we got less than two minutes left. I would say, Brother Carl, the most rewarding part is bringing people together and knowing that you did your job and they had a great time. So for that, that two hours or four hours, or even if they were there 15 minutes, I took them mm-hmm. away from whatever the woes, and that's more important now than ever, whatever yes. the drama, whatever the sadness you're going through, you weren't there in that moment. We went, we went and love was the message. We had a good time. <laughs> and they gave me their love. You know what I mean? Yes. Just in that moment. That that's that's the most rewarding part because I'm there three hours before. It takes me three hours after yeah. to put everything away. But yeah. having that that experience that makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, people don't know that man. You there before the party and you there after the party's over. Um, you know, and sometimes you know the 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 entrance to the party ain't the most, uh, you know, inviting entrance at all. That's you know correct. what I'm saying? Yeah. But so about being a good businessman, Carl, I'll just say this real quick. Being a good business yes. person, I'm never late. There I'm always go. early, and I'm mindful of who I bring with me. There you because, go. Because, you know, people, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. That's right. That's right. Look, we got 10 seconds. What's your, well, how can they get in contact with you? It's DJ dot desire with a D D E Z I R E at yahoo.com. Hit me there up. You go. There you go. Well, look, Tom, thank you so much for being on the show. Appreciate you, brother. Good seeing you again. And folks, we'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to the small business report here on Sirius XM channel 141. Winter could put a freeze on your finances with expensive car repairs. Do you want to deal with getting stuck somewhere because your car broke down? I don't, but I did. Standing in the snow was no fun waiting for a tow. That's why I have Car Shield. Taking care of a covered repair with Car Shield's administrators is easy. They handle all the paperwork and payments. Seriously, Car Shield could help save you thousands. And you get to choose the mechanic to do the work. Car Shield does the rest. Plans through Car Shield even provide coast-to-coast roadside assistance and rental coverage, all at no additional charge. That's why they're America's number one auto protection company. Car Shield is the best defense against costly repairs that could put a deep freeze on your plans and finances. Visit carshield.com slash report to save 10%. That's carshield.com slash report. A deductible may apply. Every 14 seconds, someone, somewhere, learns they have breast cancer, the most commonly diagnosed cancer worldwide. The Breast Cancer Research Foundation unites the best minds in science. A global team collaborating across disciplines and pursuing their boldest ideas. The scientists we support have been involved in every major breakthrough in breast cancer research. Our progress can be measured in millions of survivors. By investing in every aspect of breast cancer research, we're deepening our understanding of how cancer begins and why it sometimes spreads. Only with your help can we maintain our progress. Only by saving research now can we save lives tomorrow. Welcome back to the Small Business Report here on Sirius XM Channel 141. And as I promised at the top of the show, we're going to have Miss Wendy Turner Miller. She is a former uh, lawyer turned to waste management. And we're going to find out why she took that turn. You know, we're doing a lot of pivoting in this COVID environment and before. So we're going to learn about that. So, hey, Wendy, welcome to the Small Business Report here on Sirius XM. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. And I appreciate being here and talking to people and getting to know one another. And um, 
helping out any way I can with some information. So. Oh, absolutely. So you were a, a lawyer and now you're in waste management. What, what made you make that change, that, that pivot, that swap? Yeah. Well, I, and actually Howard University, actually I am a graduate of Howard University. I went to Howard's um, law school of law. So oh, I'm a, okay. a proud alum. There you go. I went to school there. I came back to Detroit where I am from and I went to school here at University of Michigan. But I started my a law practice and I started doing a lot of bankruptcy work. I ended up um, becoming, I was appointed a U.S. bankruptcy trustee here for the Eastern District of Michigan. And I'm actually still on the panel. I've been on the panel since 1999 and I hear bankruptcy cases. But at the time when I started SIS, which is my company, Superior Innovative Solutions, LLC, SIS, I, I was trying to figure out something I could do as a divorced mom, something I could give back to a legacy to my children. And um, what really was important for me is I have one son who's autistic and he's okay. not able to do a lot for himself. And so I am that mainstay and, and, and what better thing that I can do is to create a legacy for he and my other son that they can kind of pivot and do what they want to do with that as we talk about pivoting through COVID and um, create something that is sustainable. So I could not give them my law degree and I can't give right. them my, my trustee work, but I can give them a company. And um, so I'm working really hard on that to make it happen. And so far, so good. It's been three and a half years and it's going well. All so that's right. really the, the, the just of why I did it and, and, and all that. So. Now, did you have, or, uh, you know, like were your parents entrepreneurs or anybody in your family? Yes, my, um, both my parents were entrepreneurs, actually. My mother had a, a, a group of uh, adult foster care homes that she provided services for. So she had those. And my father actually was a, a CPA. He, he certified public accountant. And he was actually the first one certified here in the state of Michigan. And interesting enough, at the time when he was, you know, became this, this CPA, he could not um, do any other work as a CPA. He had to start working in a bank. So he was a teller in a bank. So, you know, I guess you know that story. And so long story short, oh, yeah. he, he retired from the government, did very well, but um, he had his own practice in terms of accounting work. So, yeah, I've had entrepreneurs around me for a, a little bit of time. So I really... I don't really know anything differently right now. So um, it was always kind of, I think, in my vein to do it. I just needed the right opportunity and the right thing to make that work for, for myself. So how, so, so how did waste management become the right thing? I'm going to tell you how it came to be the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do, I, um, I started doing a lot of research and trying to, you know, what, 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 kind of industries are sustainable what's really good you know and you know as we I live in Michigan so you know automotive is all everywhere here that's right and um I was trying to figure out what I could do from an automotive perspective initially that would um be, be a little unique because I didn't want to do what everybody else is doing but mm -hmm. yet still create something that was sustainable with some expertise so I started talking to people and, 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 and finding out what was needed in the plants and, and factories and what is ongoing. And guess what? Cleaning is going nowhere. Waste management is going nowhere. It's only increasing in, in volumes and statistics. And so I felt that was something that I could kind of pivot to and understand and create an organization or people around me that were experts in that field. And so that's, that's kind of how I did it. Um, asking around, um, having meetings, um, getting involved in different, you know, environmental organizations and really kind of understanding it and the need, the, the client base and the, and, and getting people to work with me to create that expertise. And so that's, that's kind of how SIS started. Well, and, and like you said, uh, cleaning is going nowhere. I don't know anyone that doesn't want to be clean or their house to be clean or their office to be clean or anywhere, especially restaurants or whatever. And, um, you know, so 
tell the audience what what you are actually doing because mm-hmm. I know but I need them to know as well yeah yeah and so what what I and, and you know we've got our mission but you know my vision is actually to be this this all purpose one stop shop for all your facilities maintenance needs and so okay. what that includes is our janitorial work we have like 80 people now at one of the big automotive factories doing 24 7 automotive mm-hmm. janitorial cleaning just straight janitorial industrial cleaning that's something that we I have people that have been doing it for 40 years working with me and that's the the down down cleaning of of the paint shops and of the okay. of, of the of the body shops in the in the paint shops and and just you know when they close down we go in and we take a team and we just clean it you know from top to bottom from the very top to the very bottom um absolute clean um we do that in manufacturing facilities as well um i also have we have a segment of the business that we do environmental engineering so okay. we work with some construction companies with that in terms of you know testing and 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 we have back trucks where we remove water from facilities and all kinds of things so we do that and and the last but not least we are a licensed waste removal um facility and we dispose of it we remove it we test it we do all that so again, I'm trying to do that, you know, little by little, just that one-stop shop for all of that facility maintenance needs, whether, whether it's a municipality, whether it's the government, whether it's um, automotive, just in, in any manufacturing facility, we can help you out. So that's, that's really what I'm trying to do to accomplish, and we're doing very well. So I'm, I feel very blessed and happy and Ooh, it's a lot of work, though. <laughs> oh, it sounds like it. So let, let me ask you. So how do you uh, find your opportunities? Are they RFPs, IFBs, or you know, how do you get an opportunity? Yeah, for the most part, they're RFPs. Um, and, and you're obviously competing with other people. I think that for me, being a new a, a newbie, so to speak, uh, notwithstanding the fact that the people that work with me have been doing this for years, I'm the newbie. So that's a little hard in terms of getting those, those golden opportunities where, oh, we, we've got so-and-so here. We, we need somebody to come in tomorrow to get this done. So it's really about creating that reputation and that right. um, and being authentic to people and what we do. So that, and then that takes a couple of minutes. So um, we've been very lucky. We do a lot of subcontracting work for a lot of large companies. Um, and that's kind of been our, our pivot, so to speak, to the, to the big fish. So we're doing a lot of, you know, subcontracting work with, with big companies. And then at some point, you know, people know who you are, what you do. Now you kind of pivot back around to the, to, to the big fish and say, okay, oh, yeah. now what can we do directly? And so that's, and that's how you do it. You know, um, it's, it's, it's hard, but it's, it's, it's a 24 seven job. And I, people don't, people see the end results in a lot of things, Carl, but they don't necessarily see all the work that goes in, in between, you know, That's right. and they don't see it. It's like, Oh, you're doing no, no, this is a 24 seven operation in terms of mentally what you're doing, dealing with people, dealing with finances, dealing with resources, you know, scheduling with, with, you know, Oh, just insurance bonding, all the things that are involved in this kind of business. And so irrespective as to whether or not you have other people involved as like the lead person for that, the HR person or the uh, you know, accountant, you are still in charge. And so that's you, right. You, you are steering the boat. You are making the bus turn the corner. So you have to make those decisions. And so you can't step away and say, Hey, you know, everything is going well. They don't need, no, no, you are, have to be, you have to be there 24 seven mentally and a, and a lot of physical time in terms of just being there. Not to mention the fact you still have to network, which we didn't have a lot of that during COVID. So, you know, when we first started, so did COVID. So that was, <laughs> yeah, right? you know, so you know, irrespective of having my, you know, certifications, MBEs, WBE certifications, and actually now I have my cage number. I was trying to figure out how to meet people, how to express to them what I can do and how I can do it. And when COVID came, I said, you know what? We need to learn how to do this COVID cleaning and disinfecting and, and, and be experts at that and know how to do that, you know, 24 seven. 
And that's exactly what we did. And that really was my big entree into, you know, continual work to, you know, to show you what I can do and we can do that well. And it's definitely a value added, you know, proposition for, for most employers, for oh, essential yeah. workers. Yeah. And so we started doing a lot of that in the automotive plants. And um, that's, that was really the, the, the onset of, of, of good opportunities. So, well, you know, we, uh, we got less than a minute on this segment, Well, why don't you give them your, your information so that folks know how to get in touch with you. Absolutely. We are Superior Innovative Solutions, LLC, an um, all-purpose, all-hands-on um, facility maintenance company. You can reach us at area code 313-338-9600 or visit our website at www.sysautomotive.com. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. Look, We'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to the Small Business Report here on Sirius XM Channel 141. We'll be right back. Get your classic soul and Motown in Soul Town. For the Detroit sound of Aretha. To the Memphis soul of Al. Let's together. Or the funk of James. And the hallway harmony of the Supremes. Make sure you stop in Soul Town, Channel 49. Hi, this is Jermaine Johnson, Regional President for PNC Bank. At PNC, we believe that we play an important role in building strong, vibrant, more self reliant communities. Our responsibility to help drive meaningful change has never felt more important than in this moment. Visit pnc.com slash diversity to learn more. The PNC Financial Services Group, Inc., all rights reserved. Winter could put a freeze on your finances with expensive car repairs. Do you want to deal with getting stuck somewhere because your car broke down? I don't, but I did. Standing in the snow was no fun waiting for a tow. That's why I have car shield. Taking care of a covered repair with Car Shields administrators is easy. They handle all the paperwork and payments. Seriously, Car Shield could help save you thousands. And you get to choose the mechanic to do the work. Car Shield does the rest. Plans through Car Shield even provide coast to coast roadside assistance and rental coverage, all at no additional charge. That's why they're America's number one auto protection company. Car Shield is the best defense against costly repairs that could put a deep freeze on your plans and finances. Visit carshield.com slash report to save 10%. That's carshield.com slash report. A deductible may apply. Welcome back to the Small Business Report here on Sirius XM Channel 141, powered by PNC Bank. And we have Miss Wendy Turner Miller, and she is telling us, and I'm telling you folks, she is dropping some science here today, but she's telling us about being engaged in your business because you can't take anything for granted and you just can't hand it off to somebody else and hope that they're gonna do and take take uh, all take care of it all the way and solve the problem. You gotta be the chief problem solver for your company. So with that, uh, Wendy, do you have any like role models, business role models? Uh, because you're in an environment that I would say is male dominated. Correct me if I'm wrong, but- Oh, you are so right. Absolutely, right. Um, yeah, it, it is male dominated. And um, it's, it's really hard for me a lot of times to seek those opportunities that others may get readily. Um, but I have to kind of seek them and, and, and maybe kind of come in. I'm not going to say necessarily a back door, but I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky to have people that work with me that understand that along with me. And I say, well, you know, maybe I'll send this person here and they can kind of soften it a little bit and, and then I can come in. But I, but I always feel it's necessary for me to be engaged to me, to be um, just right there with understanding each and everything that happens. Because if you do not understand what's happening and you don't know that where the money's flowing, and you don't know the contract details, you don't know the people involved, then you're gonna come up lost. 
And you're not going to be able to grow in the way that you want to grow if you un don't really understand the sustainable elements of, of a business and how that works. And it's just really just being present. I think it's being present. Maybe we talk about that and in terms of everything that's working around you. You have to know. You, know? you have to know. You, you know. So what, what is the hardest part of being a business owner? Um, having so many different elements at a time that you're dealing with, I think that between the people and the, you know, you got payroll, you've got, um, uh, uh, trying to hire people, you've got, um, just so many elements and it's getting, and just keeping that, that list of opportunities alive and, 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 and working for you. So there's all these different elements at the same time that you're always involved in. And again, I think it's enough, it's, it is a 24 seven job and it's okay. Cause I've always kind of been like that with everything I've ever done, but um, you, you don't really shut down. And even if you have the, the right person in the right seat at the right table, that's still, that's wonderful. But you know, but you still have to understand what that person at the right seat at the right table is talking about. And, right. and, and how that relates to your company and how that relates to your future and your vision. And, and, and quite frankly, having a culture, you know, you want to have your employees around you having that the same ideal of, of how you treat other people, what you do at that job and um, how you treat your customers. You know, you really have to be value at it. And um, that's really what I think is most important, treating each other with respect and dignity and understanding that we are all here, we're servicing this client and we're gonna do 200% to make sure that they are satisfied. And so, you know, we are, you know, it's, it's a smaller company than a lot of our bigger um, customers that they deal with, but we have hands-on service and we wanna make sure that everyone is treated 200% or more like royalty, as we say, as opposed to just saying, well, we got that done, no you know, what, what, how did you get that done and what happened? So we're, you know, we're very fierce about that and making sure it's kind of like a one-on-one -on -one situation. You call us on the cell phone, you know, text me, let's, let's, let's figure it out pronto. So you don't have to talk to like six or seven other people to get to me. Guess what? Call me. Let me find out what's going on and let's take care of it. So that's very important. Now that's the art of a, a business owner that's going to be successful. I can tell you that much right there. So what's the most gratifying part of being the owner of Superior Innovative Solutions? Mm, I think the, I, I've got, you know, a few things. I think, first of all, to have started something from, from the ground up that is, is I, I see it growing and, and, and being purposeful in all of the service that we provide other people but also being able to help other small business owners in, in, in the products and services that they provide and work collaboratively together. I think that's really, for me, that's important because I'm really all about giving back and helping other people. So when I have the opportunity that comes to me to be able to help another person and their company, that's priceless. And um, because that's what we really should be doing any, anyway collectively but I really am purposeful in making sure that that happens, you know, because everyone needs to be sustainable, however that works. Right, right. And I, I appreciate it because that's why we got this radio show that we can highlight businesses like yours to talk to other businesses that I currently maybe not, not know at this point in time, but eventually we'll get to know them. I mean, you know, we try to, to, to beat the bushes to get to know everybody, you know, Coast to coast, border to border. I mean, we love being on a uh, radio show that's nationwide. So, you know, do you just work in the automotive industry or, you know, I mean, Detroit is known for being an automotive giant and, and uh, having all of the uh, uh, car manufacturers right there. So is that it or do you do other uh, oh, industries. No. We do quite a bit of other things. Um, we, you know, obviously our, our, our original niche is automotive, but cleaning goes all kinds of different places. And so we mm -hmm. have teams of people that we do things in South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida, 
Um, California, we've done work, we sent teams of 20, 30 people here and there. So in automotive plants, just, yeah, there's a lot in Detroit. Oh, yeah. So a lot yeah. of the plants all over the country. And so we have travel teams that, that go different places and stay for, you know, long six months, nine months, whatever that takes. Um, and, and, it, and it works. And, and, it, and it works. And so we do automotive, we do construction companies that pre and post construction work. Um, we do janitorial 24-7, 365, janitorial in large facilities. And again, we do waste, um, back truck, you know, vacuum truck services, um, water, restoration, all those kinds of things that we do in terms of facilities and municipalities. We do a lot of work here in Detroit. So um, we are capable of moving around just like you are. You're nationwide and we are too. So hey, I, I, there you go. There you go. So I, I, this is a good time to tell them who you are again so that they, they can get in touch with you. Yes. And again, my name is Wendy Turner Miller and my company is Superior Innovative Solutions, LLC, also known as SIS. We are your one-stop shop for all your facility maintenance needs. I can be reached at area code 313-338-9600. And our website, please visit it. It's at www.sisautomotive.com. And I can tell that, you know, uh, your your marketing collateral, your capability statement is very well put together. So you. You, you are doing a good job there. Uh, and, you know, we try to tell businesses all the time, you got to have a capability statement. You got to let people know what you do. And, and uh, when I meet as, as a former contract, <coughs> excuse me, contract officer, I would meet you know, literally hundreds of businesses and I would look through their collateral and you could tell right away who are you going to invite to other opportunities and who needs to go and get some work from a small business development center like the one that I manage in D.C. But um, we got about two minutes left. So do you plan to expand to other cities? Absolutely. Um, we're doing a lot of work now in, in, in some Southern cities. And so that is one, that's part of my vision. Part of our vision for SIS is to have a, you know, another office in, in the South. So we would have here in the Midwest, and then we would have a, another um, office in you know, South Carolina, North Carolina, somewhere where we are doing a lot of work in some automotive plants there. But I do not want to say that I'm just going to do automotive. We do that, but we but cleaning and janitorial and waste goes to all kinds of municipalities. So I'm talking to some other municipalities right now about some work, um, some big, big um, contractual agreements with um, large um, contracting firms. Um, it's, you know, they do an environmental work as well as our pre and post construction work as well. And I'm also kind of venturing into doing steel fabrication. So, oh, okay. and that was, part of my initial plan, but you know, I started a little bit here, a little bit there. So now we're gonna possibly do a collaboration with a couple of other companies or one company in particular, where we will be doing um, steel fabrication, which are for, you know, automotive plants, you know, construction companies with buildings, all those kinds of things. And so again, it all kind of aligns together with doing the steel, the doing the cleaning, doing the waste, doing the environmental engineering, all of it together as a one-stop shop. And that's kind of how I, I like to market SIS and what we do and what we can do for our customers. Absolutely. So give me your info one more time. We are Superior Innovative Solutions, LLC, also known as SIS. You can be reached at area code 313-338-9600 or our website at www.sisautomotive.com. Com. Folks, that's it. We'll be back next week with vital information that'll help you grow your business. You've been listening to the Small Business Report, powered by PNC Bank, your weekly access to all the tools you need to succeed. With your host, Carl Brown, State Executive Director of the District of Columbia Small Business Development Center. Stay tuned to HUR Voices, Sirius XM, Channel 141, every Tuesday and Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific and Fridays at 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific. For expert advice from business owners, subject matter experts, and government agencies. Each week, you'll learn tips on how to start, grow, and finance your business. 
The Small Business Report is supported by the D.C. Small Business Development Center, a partnership program nationally accredited by the Association of America's SBDCs and funded by the U.S. Small Business Administration, Howard University, with Howard University serving as the network's headquarters. The Small Business Report on HUR Voices, Sirius XM Channel 141.